Well, uh, I didn't write anything out. I, you don't have to write anything out. I had a hard just, time. <laughs> just speak from the heart, you're good. Okay. So, excuse me if I do stumble my words a little bit. I'm um, just going to speak from my heart, like you said. Um, in 1997, uh, I saw Dr. Nassar. Um, I was a gymnast, competitive gymnast, and uh, really dedicated to the sport. Spent a lot of time in the gym, had a lot of injuries. Uh, this one year, or this one month in 97, we were at a competition and I ended up fracturing and dislocating my coccyx bone, my tailbone. And um, went over to see him the following day. And I'd seen him before for like wrist tendinitis types of injuries, things like that. And I uh, went on over to the table and my mother was in the room. And he explained that due to the injury, which he had an x-ray, and he did show us the coccyx bone was um, dislocated and fractured. How old were you at the time? Twelve. Twelve? Twelve. Um, so she was in the room, he explained, I, I'm going to need to have you take off your pants and lay face down and um, I will have to massage the muscles, my fingers. And um, he said I will have to go up the anally and massage those muscles to loosen them before I, before I move the bone back into place. So I lay down and my mother was aware and he instead inserted his fingers into my vagina. Um, and because of me being 12, I didn't know, I really didn't even know the difference, honestly, if it was my vagina or, or what, I didn't know. But I just remember being in so much pain, tears streaming down my face, holding onto the table, just shaking, just gritting my teeth, and I felt like I didn't, I didn't know what to do. My mother and him were having a conversation this whole time, just about whatever, life. And um, it seemed like forever, went on forever, and then finally he pulled his, his hand out of um, anally and then inserted them vaginally, and that's when I knew there was a difference at that point, and it, that he had had his fingers in both places. Was this with, if you don't mind and you mm -hmm. don't have to answer, um, was this with gloves or without, do you remember? I don't remember. Um, but when he did put the bone back in place, I went to school. He said, come back and see me in a few weeks and we'll make sure it's back. It's, it's fine. Went back to see him a couple weeks later. Just feeling better. And he says, um, we didn't do an x-ray. Did not do any x-ray. He said, it's out of place. Again, I need to redo the procedure. And I remember just being completely <sighs> scared. You know, I didn't want to go through that again. I did not want to go through that. But I went through it again, and the same thing, just the tears coming down, uh, almost kind of just in the middle of it, I don't want to say blacked out, but was like out of body, almost just numb, um, blank stare, kind of um, didn't know what to do. My mom was once again in the room, and on the way home, I told her what happened, and uh, she, she was livid. Just so furious, and I remember her saying, "What he did? What? He didn't tell me he was going to do that. He just said he needed to do uh, anally massage the muscles. You did. He didn't tell me he was going to go up the other way." And at that point, I was scared. I didn't know what to think. Um, being a twelve-year-old, you kind of just trust the doctor, like you know all the other women were saying. You just believe that he's doing what's best for you and what's right for you. Being that young. Just trust, and, and he was very well respected, and everybody talked so highly of him. So um, back in the gym, I remember people whispering about what had happened because at that point it went around everyone. All the parents were talking, coaches were talking about it, and I felt really alone. Um, just, I didn't know what to think or do, really, just very alone. And uh, do, you, do you mean that they were talking about what happened to you? Mm -hmm. Everyone was talking about it, and no one did anything? Nobody did anything, no. Um, the coaches, I think that was, I know they're probably listening and watching, the people that I was most disappointed in because they were supposed to protect us. And um, they, they just decided that it was more important to have functioning athletes and their reputation was more important than our well-being. 
and how we felt. So I, you know, really that was the thing that really broke my heart. I think was that they let they let me down. And I want to say this because I think in all sports now, especially with this happening, I think it's important that the coaches really try to be there for the athletes and not think about the sport and the competition and the notoriety of how great they are over the fact that they're working with children, they're coaching children, they're leaving their children in care of somebody like Larry, and they're just brushing it all aside. And I don't want that to ever happen to anybody else. Uh, so, you know, this happened when I was 12, I'm now 33. And um, I have four kids of my own, and I've had so much depression over my life, over the, over the years. I think that was my biggest struggle. Severe depression, I've been having trouble sleeping, trouble with relationships, trouble keeping jobs. I mean, everybody's story that I've listened to, it just is just an echo of everything that I've went through. They're just speaking like it's my voice, so I just, um, uh, it's just really surreal actually being in the situation right now. I never imagined I'd be here. I heard about this last minute, and, um, and I really couldn't sit down and write. <laughs> I said, I just got to go up and, and say what happened to speak my truth. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I need to pinpoint right now. I just want other girls to be safe, other people, not just girls, but other athletes and every, even, even boys to be safe um, from sexual predators, from this kind of abuse. And, um, And I do forgive you too, Larry. I believe in forgiveness. I'm not going to carry that for the rest of my life. I'm not. I have important things to do as a mom. I have some really great people in my life. My dad's here to support me today. And I just wanted to speak, just say this finally, just really get it off my chest and put it out there. And hopefully it will help other people do the same in other situations.